Hey there. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. I'll say that again. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast, oh, yep, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Now it's time for the Big Bad Broadcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to... with a new intro. Oh, that was yeah. nice. That was very cool. It's totally early, but it was very cool. Yeah. Well, hey, let's welcome to Fluffer Friday. <laughs> Fluffer Friday. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great show for you today, but who's watching out there? Let me look in the magic mirror. Quiet oh. little Billy, <laughs> Joey, <laughs> Andrew, and <laughs> TJ to piss him off. Right. <laughs> puff puff pass tj puff, Sally, puff, pass. Is that andrew or and drew i'm not sure <laughs> so, yeah that's what i thought yeah yeah well, hey hey good. craig that that um i don't know about that circle with the fluffing all right we are up we are now 13 seconds in, and we're already 12 year old boys <laughs> all right not me. Hey, mature i started it we started it. Come on. <laughs> All right. So let's get this crazy show started. We got another week. We got another great show for you today. We got some great guests. But again, let's uh, meet the cast for their hundredth billionth time. We'll start off with the ladies. We have Jan Karam. Oh, wait. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and and Matt, Craig. Matt from Crunching Numbers. We have yeah. Craig Yoda Mitchell. Ooh, the other lady on the show. <laughs> yeah, right here. Third lady. We have Joe Silky, the mind reader. Yay. And I knew you'd say that, Joe. And right. we have straight from Sturgis, Mike Sturgis. Reese. Just call me guns, man. Call me guns. Guns yeah. grease. Guns grease. Yeah, let me tell you something. I've been hanging and banging. Good. <laughs> hanging and hanging and banging. And no fluffing. Right. <laughs> and who are you and who are you i am uh the legendary as they say comic magician john ferentino wow thank you and you know what they mean when they say legendary that means they want to book you before you die <laughs> so it's great today we have a guest on finally older than me <laughs> so, <laughs> So anyway, we've had a crazy week with the Olympics and stuff, but let's talk personally about ah. what's going on in our lives. Give me a quick little minute thing. Jan, what's new with you? Oh, well, you know, we were talking about it, uh, that I got a haircut, and I said, I said it was a new girl, and uh, she lives in Santa Clarita, and I was like, no, Santa Clarita, I wanted to leave, because that's, you know, north of L.A., so I'm like, ooh. But anyway, she put, she cut, I said, no layers, and she goes, I know what I'm doing. And so it's all layers. I'm really upset. I'm crying. I, I don't have a boyfriend or a husband. So I'm telling you guys, because you know how we need to come home and tell you, like, she got my hair and I told her not to do And she was talking about her boyfriend the whole time. And she kept snipping away. And I wanted to say something. And then you chime in and go, why didn't you say something? You need to be more assertive. I know I do. I do. I need to be more assertive. But I didn't know I was under the spell. So anyway, now I have layers. It's like a Laverne and Shirley. It's like Shirley's haircut. I mean, I don't even know what this is. I'm so like, upset. Like layers. layers. Huh? You got to have a Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, and then people go, oh, but you look good anyway. It doesn't matter. You can have, but it's like, still, I just, 
I said no layers and I have layers and it's, so I know, I know it's fine, but I, I, I just made such a commitment to get my hair cut after COVID. And then I end up with something I have to just put in a ponytail. Okay. So that's all that's me. Thanks for letting me cry on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I, we watched on your last show, you stand up on Letterman. Lots of hair on that one. I know. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't have raised your arms. But anyway. Oh, hey. Oh. Hey, I'll be here all week. I, I think I have a thing about my hair because my mom's always say, she, she goes, whenever I do a, like, when, anytime I did Tonight Show Letterman, she goes, why'd they do your hair that way? And like, they, like, it was a conspiracy. They didn't do it in, you know, it's, yeah. So I have a thing about my hair. This is just like Mike. Yeah, I go. That's like, you I know, go layerless. I know. Barking, yes, you go. You're barking up the wrong tree with these guys. I know. Yeah. See, the reason I wear I wear this on my head so nobody mistakes me for Joe. Right. <laughs> Ow. Ouch. You guys have different, but you have the facial hair. Oh, you yeah, you all have facial hair. You I all do. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Joe's wearing a facial. That's it. That's it. We should get you a little disguise. I love facials. <laughs> because you guys can. You go to the barber. And they're going to do the same. That's why guys go to the same. You don't have hair, so it doesn't. But you guys yes. go to the same hairdresser, right? Because you don't yes. want any. When, I moved, when I moved from New York to Florida, I was devastated to have to find somebody to cut my hair. Because unlike some of the guest members, I still have hair. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and Craig. Yeah. It's, no, it's, what do I, what do I chop Come them on. Up? I got more hair on my back, John. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have. Remember during COVID when I grew my hair long like an idiot? Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. We have Craig, you have, you have hair, except that it's starting now and back in the middle of your head. <laughs> Craig. You hit that billboard space on your forehead. You caught, you caught him as he was drinking. You almost killed him. Was yeah. All right. Let's not pick on Craig. Craig, we, we had a great thing a couple of weeks ago where we got to see you fall on your times. Yeah. And uh, what's oh. what's with you? Well, my ulcerative colitis uh, uh, cleared up. That's one thing. And uh, no, I, uh, I, we, I just shot a really funny comedy bit for my cooking show with Mr. Grief. He's very, very funny. Oh, good. <laughs> very funny. And where, where can, can they see that? this, this yeah. comedy show? Oh, you can see it on Taste on TV Thursdays at 730. That's Eastern and, and Pacific time. And as Beavis would have to say, <laughs> I got to taste my TV. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. No way. What, and where is it taste on TV? Is that a streaming thing? It's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a streaming app on Roku. It's also on Amazon Fire and Apple TV. You can also download the app onto your phone. You can watch it on the web. And if not, I can. you can call me and I'll literally just, you know, narrate everything that's on the screen so you can hear what's going on. He makes really cool stuff, man. He makes like carb free everything. Oh, what really? Yeah, yeah. Low carb, low carb. Yeah, I mean, I just, like, low, but I mean, what some of the stuff he's making, um, it has so many carbs, and what he makes is essentially no carb. Oh, you know oh, I mean? low carb I remember, the show. Yeah, I remember the show when you made a. You spent like forty five minutes making a Big Mac. And yep. uh, you made the bun, and you made you made all the stuff. Oh. You know what? Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a big nap. Wow. <laughs> Who knew that all we needed was a woman on the show to get Joe to talk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, well, I'm the fluffer. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, we get, so, so, so did you guys watch the uh, watch the game or what? Wait, wait, you oh. didn't get to what you did oh, yet. Oh, oh, right. oh, what I did. What I, oh, we don't know what I did. Personal, I, personal. I, I, took, I, took, I took a trip to Costco. That's my big adventure. I went, wow. let me tell you something. I'm sore right now. Forget about the gym. Walk through Costco. You know, <laughs> it's like eight miles long. And, and you know, it, and, and the good thing is, is I, I only had to hit about three people because you, you see all these <laughs> videos of how rude people are. The truth is, is that rude people are rude to guys that maybe look, you know, like, like, like whatever, but they're not usually rude. But to you're me. the alpha rude. Yeah, <laughs> people people aren't generally rude to me because I'll you know. It's just, you're the I'll guy just, who's rude. What's that? You're, you're the, the guy Sturgis who's rude. guy. The yeah, Sturgis. The Sturgis guy never gets picked yeah. up. Yeah, Sturgis guy. Except what are you, you saying? Except I look Sturgis like one of the guys guy. that goes to Sturgis. 
Yeah. <laughs> a motorcycle guy. I hate those places like Costco's and BJ's. It's like you don't like BJ's. BJ's? <laughs> That's what we have in Florida. <laughs> Is that oh my god. Be? That's what it's called in Florida. They have Costco's that's, and BJ's. That's what it, it's, oh, just, well, it's just called head in California. Anyway, <laughs> the crazy part is, <laughs> when you get back on track, the yeah. crazy part is that it's like the stores. It's like you want to buy olive oil. You got to keep it in your garage at a 50-gallon drum. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, let me pump out some olive oil for a salad. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like pepper. Yeah. I saw a comic the other day that I thought this is the funniest line. He goes, he goes, so I went to the store and I bought um, salt, right? And I bought this orange, this pink salt, Himalaya Himalayan. salt. Himalayan it says Himalayan salt. He goes, man, you took 500,000 years to manufacture, to get this. He goes, <laughs> there was an expiration date on it. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> he goes, February 28th, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> that's the day the world ends i think yeah. so anyway nothing going on with me other than poor chris is a teacher in florida and she got covid and oh, she's been God. boosted vaccine you know twice she got everything wow. it's not so bad it just ends up being like uh, a head coal and but you know she feels pretty good and this is how great florida is they told her tomorrow is friday they go whether you test negative or positive come back to work Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So, she's, so she's like, no way. So, oh my god! On Friday, I'm, they wanted her to go to work. Yeah, today. I wanted to go back. So she's going to go get tested tomorrow. Make sure she's negative because they are off tomorrow for some teacher thing, and then hopefully Wait, by Monday she'll be able to go Friday. back. Oh, yeah. And then, um, uh, so today I was going out and I saw they were opened up the COVID testing place. So I just pulled in, got a COVID test, and that was negative. And the PCR will be back tomorrow, but I feel fine. We've just been quarantined in the house. It's kind of weird. We're wearing masks. We have a big couch. She sits on one side. I sit on the other. We're like 10 feet away. Uh, we eat at opposite ends of the dining room table. And oh. it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. You it's know, crazy. in California, they so it's have. bringing you closer they, together. What? Yeah. <laughs> in California, they have. Because yeah, normally they're 15 feet apart. <laughs> in California, they have COVID testing at gas stations now. They really do. It's like really? Vegas with gambling. Yeah, you actually get a free test with a fill-up. I'm not kidding. No. <laughs> free test. I'm kidding the last part. But no, they do have – I went – it was a golf station. It had COVID testing. Stop in. Uh, wow. That's yeah. crazy. It, it, like, COVID testing so different now. Like, the first time I had it, they uh, they stuck that thing so far up my nose, man. It wiped out my memory of high school. And now it's just like – now they just, like, give it, like, a little swirl. You know, yeah. the, see that that was just uh, that wasn't a COVID test. They were just having fun. They were like, "Come on, let's just go. come yeah, on." Come I told I told you that story, right? Where I had to have this kidney stone blasted out. And I was talking to the nurse, and she said, uh, "Were you COVID tested?" And I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "What did you you know?" She goes, "You know a lot about the hospital." And I go, well, "I had a degree in radiology." Blah blah blah. I get in before the radiologist puts me to sleep. He goes, "So the nurse told me that you're a comedian." And I go, <laughs> "I go, yeah." He goes, "Well, we're not." doing this procedure until you tell us a joke. Oh. <laughs> so I go, I go, well, I had the COVID test and I go, and they took the thing so far up my nose that it wiped out my memory of high school. And as I said it, he goes, thank you. Good night. And put me oh to my God. <laughs> you can't even write something that funny. <laughs> That's, so he was kind of being rude. Yeah, he was, no, he's kind of cool. No, he's kind of cool. They started to laugh, and he goes, "Thank you, good night." And boom, pushed the button. And, I was and John like, woke up with a vasectomy instead of whatever. Else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Who watched the Olympic halftime show? The the Super Bowl halftime. Yeah, what did right. I say? What did he I say? said Olympic, Olympic halftime. Yeah, the Olympic halftime show. <laughs> it's probably because I was watching it in between the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. I watched um, it just to see Snoop Dogg being able to stand up straight. Yeah, he's like a, cool. I like him. He is who he is, right? He's like he's a caricature of himself now, right? Yeah. Has <laughs> he? Yeah. Well, he has to stand up straight. Fifty cents. I I know fifty cents since he was two dimes and a quarter. I mean, okay. Hey, dollar fifty. You can't even he's call him down. fifty. You can't call him fifty cents. Cent. Because it's cent. Cent. Fifty cent. Fifty cent. Fifty cent. Yeah, well, anyway, people are saying it was the greatest halftime 50. show uh, ever. And I'll tell you my opinion is that 
for whoever thinks it was the greatest halftime show ever, it was the greatest halftime show ever. For me, I've only seen a couple because I'm not a big football fan. I, I was entertained. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Me too. Uh, I don't know if it was the greatest halftime show ever because I've only seen one or two, but but I thought it was pretty good. They're yeah. saying it's a toss-up between the Rolling Stones, Prince, and that show as the Prince. top shows of I all time. Better than I can see that. You know? I can see that. Mm. I mean, I, I remember back in the 90s, I think they had Randy Newman. So they've come a long way. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he had a bunch of short dancers. A bunch of short dancers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my buddy. But, but, you know, kind of, Joe. No, but what happened to marching bands and they they make these oh, things yeah. like Huntley Berkeley movies, you know? It's kind of like they, they make the that's, American flag and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's college. Joe, I'm the gay one. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was all right. I mean, I didn't think, you know, I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was, you know, horrible. It, it was just you okay. Can say, you can say what you want about the show, but boy, there was a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of energy. Hey, when, you know? when Eminem was singing, I, I was doing this when Eminem. I was doing this. When <laughs> what? I asked a, a friend of mine who's like in his twenties, and he says, "Well, he says it was no J Lo or Shakira. Now that was a show." <laughs> Beyonce was really good when she was on there. Yeah, Beyonce, Beyonce and uh, good. My and son Bruno who loved. So son who, they, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, my son loved rap. He loved it. He thought it was one of the greatest shows ever. Yeah, I, I loved it when Kid Rock did it. Kid Rock was great, but you know, so long ago. Yeah, very long ago. We can. Yeah. He is a name we do not speak anymore. Yeah, I, oh, I, yeah. I, <laughs> who, along with he who must not be named. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, but that I just read. Funny. That. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. No, good, good, good. It's funny that they that okay, Mary J. Blige. She's not really a rapper. There's other rappers like Lil Kim or Missy Elliott, or I know she's fa- she's famous or maybe has a bigger well, name. I don't know. But made a blues run. Run. I made a blues run for uh, for Not Missy for Elliott. Say. She's more like Tony Braxton. Years run. years ago, I, I was know, a limo driver. I drove, I drove a limo. I I drove uh, Missy Elliott and a, a few her to to a record whatever session and and uh, I had to, you know part of it was going out and uh, taking them for liquor store picking up booze. That, that was a wild day hanging out with Missy Elliott for a day. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. So why wasn't she well? And I just thought they could have more women. There, people are upset about whatever the political thing. But I thought, well, why don't aren't there more women? Even if it is rappers or, you know, that have women represent. That's all I'm saying. Because they didn't want to work for free. Yeah, <laughs> they were working. What? They're not going to work. Yeah, they were saying that it was like close to thirteen million dollars for the halftime show. What amazes me is how fast they set it up and break it down. Forget about the show. The fact that they could build all that shit, break it down, and still do the game is pretty incredible. I mean, yeah. It's pretty incredible. You doesn't know? It, it doesn't mess up the field. That's what I always wonder about. Like, aren't there, like, divots or something where they kind of somebody – Probably. I don't oh, know. Like uh, there's, divot, there's divots anyway for where some guy's head's got smashed in anyhow. Yeah. I mean, it's you know – Football, they don't care. If it was baseball, uh, like, oh, excuse me, it's not. Yeah, it's not golf. There's a divot over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we listen, a dime over here. Before we bring in our guest, Jeff, Joe, we didn't ask you. Did you have something you wanted to show us? Oh yeah, I got, I got a uh, an old mind reading video that uh, you guys may want to watch. Yeah, let's Ooh. watch that and then let's get right to our guests. Okay. Welcome, I am Alexander, the man who knows. I am going to attempt to read your mind. What I want you to do is gaze into my crystal ball. Gaze deeply. Remember one card and keep it in your mind. Just concentrate on that card. Look into my eyes and think of your card. I will now make your card disappear. Thank you and have a nice day. Ta da! <laughs> Yay! I like that. I like that. That's so calming. How the fuck did you do that? 
<laughs> How did you do that? Yeah, it's very well. I love the visible by nine. Yeah, no. Oh. I like I like the way Alexander's voice sounds like you. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of people, a lot of people have said that. <laughs> I am the. I am the I'll tell you, Joe. Know, seriously, I don't know if you guys know, but that's an actual old poster that he animates. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's an I, that's an, a painting of Alexander the Great, and Joe animates the poster. How do you oh. do that? I am the man. Uh, on the computer and play yeah. around with it. And- Oh wow! Oh, that's all right. Nice. Are we ready? Oh, yeah. We're ready. Yep. Yeah. All right. So you can all go home and do it yourself now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's that easy. All right. So at this point, now I'm going to turn over the show to Mike Grief, who's going to wow. introduce our guest today. The most unqualified guy, me. Anyway, I'm really <laughs> excited today because our guest is is not only uh, an, just a, an incredible stand-up comic, uh, an actor, but he's just a really great great guy he's definitely he's the kind of guy that i wish my dad was he's just a good stand-up guy and and a good friend let's hear it for mr blake clark and let's show that video of uh let's show let's show what he does stupid stuff you ever call an airline or or a bank or a credit card company what do they do what do you get a a person anymore no you get that recording if you're calling from a touchtone phone press one now that little pause and that slightly emphatic now like you're supposed to and then it runs through the whole menu of things like like if you want to do this press two if you want to check on your balance press three which is fine if the numbers are down here on the base but if they're up here on the, on the receiver by the time you take it down find three press they've moved on to something else you know what I'm saying? press five hey wait you said three Seven. Hey, make up your mind. Three or five. What do you want? Seven now. You just canceled your account. Hey! Where's the go to hell button on this thing? I'll press that. There should be. There should be a go to hell button on telephones. There should be a go to hell button on the telephone. I'll use that a lot. Just call up the IRS. Then when you're done, done with your telephonic business, it says to end this call, press eight. (laughs) If you don't know how to end the telephone call, (laughs) we don't need you. It's time to thin the herd. (laughs) Are we that stupid? I don't think so. They think so. They think we're going to sit there and go, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm done with my business, but I don't know what to do. Hang up the phone and get on with the rest of your life. If you're that stupid, if you press 8, it should shock you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, you might remember him from that, or you might remember him from Boy Meets World, Home Improvement, or almost every other Adam Sandler movie. Uh, let's hear it for my buddy, Blake Clark. Hey, thank you. Hey, Blake. Thank you, thank Woo! you. Those were, those were the brown hair days. <laughs> I was going to say, you look exactly the same. Yeah, Except right. Now <laughs> you're the nutty pro- nutty professor version of yourself. <laughs> there you, you go. You look like you. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. How, oh, good. How, how are you, how are you doing today, sir? I'm alive. I'm alive. Still upright with a pulse. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm. I'm, 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 I'm a, there you go. To, they say well, you really... gotta stay five feet away from everyone. When yeah. I was in Nam, it was fifteen feet. It was five meters. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a gun. It was a gun's length. What? You had to keep no, a gun a gun length away from people. So so that you, so that if a mortar round hit, you know they'd only get five guys, not uh, ten. Yikes. There you go. Well, oh, I was going to wow. get to that. So, so uh, I, was, I want to introduce the audience to you. I'm sure they know who you are, but like you see, you're you're from you're from Macon. You grew up in uh, Macon, Georgia, right? I did. And so, let me ask you a question now, because I always I run into this a lot with stand up comics. There was your now, especially kind of Macon, Georgia. Was your family supportive of your stand up, or did they look at you like you were just kind of crazy? Uh, they always looked at me. That way. <laughs> <laughs> from the time I was a little kid. Until they all died. <laughs> I am the only, I am the sole survivor of my unit. 
<laughs> all the rest of my unit has been wiped out. Right. <laughs> so I remember my dad died when I was young. He was I was fourteen when he died. But uh, my mother, she uh, when I told him I was going to come out here from making, she was, "What are you going to do if you fail?" And I went, "What do you? What am I going to do if I go out there and I'm successful?" <laughs> yeah. Yep. My father, my father always thought stand-up was just a way of trying to get out of doing a, a real job. You know, that was I mean, the show business wasn't real to them. But so when, when no. did you when did you come out to Los Angeles? Nineteen. I moved out here January twenty fourth, nineteen eighty. Well, wow. nineteen eighty. In and fact, so, seven. Uh, today's the seventeenth, right? Yeah. Yep. Fifty years ago today, I asked my wife to marry me. Wow. She, wow. Had, she still hasn't gotten back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. She's on the phone. What's that chat? Light on? Okay. <laughs> I mean, and so finally come to her senses. Get him out of here. So had you started stand-up before you came out to LA, or did you come out to be an actor? No, I, I had kind of done, you know, I'd kind of done it a little bit. I started doing uh, some community theater and I liked it. It was it was fun. I had tried all kind of other things. I was a coach for a while. I owned my own business, which was <laughs> I owned a wine I owned a wine and cheese store in Macon, Georgia. Wow. <laughs> Not the smartest idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> location, like, location, <laughs> location. <laughs> if I'd have sold Boone Farm in Velveeta, I'd still be there. <laughs> Sounds like you'd be ex- as successful as opening a haberdashery. In, in <laughs> yes. So I, I held on to that for, you know, it, Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's. Got us through the rest of the year. I, I would, there would be days. This is how I came. This is when I went insane, I guess. There would be days I'd go open the place and close it. Nobody would ever come in. Wow. You know, like four or five days in a row, I had no customers. Wow. So I just spent my time sitting in there writing stupid stuff. And eventually I started doing it. Right. And that's but when you- I... I'd say, so obviously, I'm sorry, but you, 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 uh, you did, that was in, in 80 and I got ahead of myself because I wanted to talk about, so you, you were a lieutenant and uh, you were in Vietnam and you, you were a lieutenant and. Uh, yes, I was. I, and I that, got drafted. Wow. I was one of the last of the draft class. Which is, what's that? Uh, I think that's Joe's uh, heart heart alarm going off. <laughs> <laughs> you said the magic word. <laughs> <laughs> Take your nitroglycerin <laughs> pill, Joe. Blake, when you said you were one of the last draft classes, yeah, was that the we, first draft, the first numbered draft? No, I was in the uh, when they had when they came up with the my hair's all screwed up. When they I came up with the when they <laughs> came up so with the mine. lottery, I was at officer candidate school at Fort Benning, so I think my number was over three hundred. I don't remember exactly. I think it was yeah. Mine was mine was three thirty five in yeah. that draft. I would have never had trip. to go, but I was my, already yeah. in. So my number was four thirty six, but that was the number on the bus ticket to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to say R O D C man ran over to Canada. Yeah. And OCS OCS was over choppy seas. Over choppy seas. So yeah. so what was that like? I mean, I I'll tell you the truth. For me, I was t- I mean, I wasn't as old enough. It it ended before, but I had to sign up for the draft. And I grew up terrified that I would have to go to Vietnam. And my, I mean, I want to salute my hats off to you because you guys went Seriously. and did that. Hey, it wasn't. Whenever somebody finds out I was, I'm a veteran and they say thank you for the service, I always say, wasn't my idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> I it was, was a never, di- I would it was a different time. It. it was a different time back then. Yeah, it was. It, it, you know, it hung the, when I was at Fort Dix, New Jersey, which is. It's not even a fort there. It's just called a multi-use facility or something. It was they combined McGuire Air Force Base and Fort Dix and then some other something. But I was there doing basic training, and they'd uh, you know you'd be out there doing bayonet training in the snow, training for Vietnam in a foot of snow. And they'd go, what did the only two cat? They'd say, what are the only two kind of people on a battlefield? We're supposed to yell back, the quick and the dead, drill sergeant. 
And they singled me out because they knew I was a smart ass. And they went, Clark, what are the two kind of people on the battlefield? I went, Minorities and the poor girls, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do push ups in the snow. But. Oh, oh, God. God. So, so that was a good true. line. So did that prepare? I mean, so I know, I know just because I know, but the audience says no. So then you, you did you do humor about being in Vietnam? I mean, that was, I know that was the thing not, when you. Not when you, for a while. I kind of, when I came home, you know, I, I don't want to beat this. It's been beaten to death. But people hated us. They hated the army. They hated the the, the soldier. They blamed us for it, you know. And, and it was a, 90% of the guys over there didn't want to be there. Didn't even want to be in the service. Yeah. But anyway, I, okay. I I let my hair grow, and I grew a big Fu Manchu mustache. And <clears throat> didn't, didn't even talk about it. Didn't even tell. Once I, you know, kind of had my hair to a little bit longer in the mustache. I never said anything about it and yeah. didn't want people to know I'd been in Vietnam. So, you know, yeah. it's, I, you know, it's, wow. you know, I, I didn't go and I'm from that same era, you know, you're just a little bit older than I am. And Home Spurs, John, no, it's, it's what he's saying is really brings to my heart because I didn't realize like how fucking dicks we were. You know what I mean? What? And it's just because we just didn't want to go so much and we didn't believe in it. And it's just, it's funny. I don't know of a lot of people, but it's like, I, I definitely, I mean, I never accosted a soldier or told him to his face. I thought he was a dick or a baby killer, which was rampant at the time. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I read so many things. I did a lot of shows for like Vietnam vets and stuff to kind of make up for it. Yeah. And boy, when I heard the stories and it's just, it's, it's heart wrenching, you know, like that they were treated. No one wanted, to, they didn't want to go. And especially no. ones that were drafted. And yeah, it was terrible. Well, so, I know the country has done it. Send my done... apologize, apology 50 years later. <laughs> and, and, and I know the country no. has tried its hardest to, to make that up to the Viet. I mean, nothing can make up what was done to Vietnam veterans, but I know they've right. tried and, and to honor you guys the way you deserve to be honored, you know? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I said and, that, you know, that uh, the, 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 pretty much the, all the vet, vet, Vietnam veterans and Vietnam era veterans uh, message was hate the war, don't hate the warrior. Yeah. You know, mo- most of those guys, now it's all volunteer and those guys, uh, you know, I've been to Afghanistan, I've been to Iraq and they're unbelievable. They're, they're, motivated and they're smart and they're intelligent and they're big and they're strong and they're tough. And, you know, I don't know what's going on over there with Russia and Ukraine right now, but you know, it's, you basically got one guy, Putin, who's calling all the shots. So, you know, whatever happens, it ain't going to be a cake. What it's never fun to the people who are actually there yeah. doing it. Yeah, I just, I just, I like you said, we don't, we don't want to harp on that, you know, because I, I know you don't want to, you know, so, Man, so, so, I'm, so I'm, an, I'm, 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 well, <laughs> can I ask a question? So though, right? I, I, would, I was going to move on to what was Craig, you got to, no. I just have a quick question. Uh, you're, you're playing a therapist on, yeah, on the United States, Al, talking right. to a veteran. Was that part of the reason why you were cast in the role or one of the reasons you were attracted to it? Well, yeah, I, I don't know if it was. That and the paycheck. I, I don't know. I, I the, the reason I was attracted to it is the Chuck Lorre uh, uh, production. So you know he's <laughs> like yeah. sure he he's the he's the he's the, the king. <laughs> he's the guy now. Uh, when I when you know when I did the tape at home, I said uh, you know you introduce yourself on the tape and then then you do the the reading and I said uh, Blake Clark. And I am a Vietnam, and I emphasize combat veteran. So I guess they kind of <laughs> said, yeah, that's the attitude we want, you know, because there's a big difference between um, a veteran yeah. and a combat veteran. A huge so, difference, yes. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. I want to well, say something. I, Can I say something? Oh. Sure. Okay. Um, I because my therapist is about say went around the same time you did and he's he's your age and he's traumatized 
we talk, I mean, he talks about it and he was a therapist or at, um, at the, at the VA, like right before COVID. Yeah. He, and uh, it's just devastating. He deals with them coming back from, you know, Iraq and PTSD and, and his own trauma that comes up. And he speaks about it when it, it just fills him up. Like it fills you up with that, with so many different emotions. And uh, it's, it's just amazing what it, how it's impacted so many lives for so many years in a, such a personal and um, level. D. Yeah. It, and it, it also, I think also too, the older you get, you know, when I got, when I came, I was older than most guys. I, I turned 25 over there because I went, I finished college and then went in and then went <clears throat> to OCS and then went back to Fort Dix and then went to Nam. So I turned 25 in February uh, uh, over there. So I was a little bit older than most guys, but I had a lot of college grads in my platoon. I had like nine guys that finished, had graduated college. And, um, so it was the last big draft class of, of that, of that uh, period because, you know, like we were talking about, they went to the lottery. And um, I think most of the guys, the older they get, yeah, you know, and you have kids and some, I, I've, I have had two sons, still do, and uh, <laughs> you've been married to a wonderful woman for 50 years. And you, you start thinking about how much those guys sacrificed. Yeah. that didn't get to do that. And, you know, yeah. I came close many times. I was, I don't know how I got through it, through some of the stuff that I got, <laughs> that I got through just dumbass luck, I guess. Well, and, I find, I just find it amazing though, that you found it in yourself yeah. from coming from something like that. And then to bring joy into the world, you know, to yeah. bring laughter right. and, and to, you, to me, you've dedicated yourself to entertaining and to, 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 laughter and things like that you know and aware bringing awareness right through the through comedy through you know yeah, i that's the uh yeah uh, i'm uh i'm kind of uh proud uh, to 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 have in some very 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 minute way to change the attitude toward the soldier and you know we owe owe them everything yeah so I want to bring up something that probably none of these guys know, and most people don't know. Uh, when you moved out, you 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 were the doorman for a while at the yeah. comedy store, oh, right. and there's a there's a secret about a haunting a thing there. What, what's oh, the yeah. story with the there ghost? Ain't no secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's some strange stuff. I don't know what it is, man. I I've thought about it over the years, and some of the weird stuff that happened. It defies uh, explanation. I, I don't know. I started doing stuff like getting getting witnesses. Like I remember Emil Pandolfi, who's a big time uh, pianist and and uh, music uh, star uh, for uh, now. He was a piano player at the comedy store, so I would I would have to lock up. That was one of my jobs. So I went lock up the main room. I bolted the door at the top and bolted it at the bottom turned cl closed it and locked it with the key and I, and I watched watch this i said watch and he goes what and just, just stand right there and watch and so the doors kind of went and came open <gasps> no. and he looked at me and he i went okay and i did it again and the doors you know he sat about a minute and then the doors went out and it came open again and I went, fine, you want doors open? Doors open. Let's go. And he was going, that, that, we, well, what that? <laughs> Does that happen? I went, yeah, pretty much every night, sometimes, different things. Yeah. Wow. I, wow. I, I, I always I got a spooky feeling in that place. I mean, I, you know, when I, I was years after, uh, when I, when I started uh, doing sets there, I actually, I, I passed. Mitzi used to give me spots because she uh, thought I was somebody else. <laughs> 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 she had mistaken me for an Australian comic, and I'd, so I'd call in every week. And you know, so, you got my spot for that some stupid accent. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that Scottish? She used to say, "Well, I never, I never see any ghosts or anything." I said, "No, Missy, you, you would make them showcase." <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my, my ex roommate, you might know you, Missy. 
<laughs> my, no, my, my ex-roommate, Joey Gaynor, he says he always wanted to do a documentary about yeah. the ghost of the comedy yeah. store. So you were you were roommates with Gaynor? I was. It was one of the weirdest things ever with that with him, man. We were down it they, it's where they do podcasts now from the right. comedy store. But it, you, we used to call it the dungeon. Because oh. there was nothing on there. It was a dirt floor under there. It was wow. part concrete and a dirt floor. And you and you know, because the place used to be Ciro's were back there? in the Huh? I, were there ghosts at Ciro's? Do they say? Are there ghost stories from when it was Ciro's? Because that'd think be so. interesting. And I think people got whacked and maybe even buried underneath there, down oh. in the jungle. There. Oh wow! And uh, and and there was a. You, you've been in the main room, right? Yeah. The dressing room in the main room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They call it the Tiny Tim room. You open there's a little closet there. You open the closet and look down and there's a hole in the floor. It goes all the way down to a stream underneath the comedy store. Oh, wow. Gosh. Yeah. It's a weird place. And, uh, you know, they used to say people were whacked in there because the, 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 uh, mafia, you know, had, a uh, connections and stuff and people would be and the, the belly room used to be the office and it was lined and lit because it wasn't somebody pulling into the, to the, uh, Parking lot and machine gunning the, the office. Yeah, well, it's, oh, it's, a leg- yeah. it's a legendary place, that's for sure. And I'm yeah. sure that the bullet hole that Sam Kinison put in the sign is still there. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> but uh, we will talk about. So, so what I what, so like I said, people, people definitely, I'm sure, recognize you from from all of these. You were, you know, you were in oh, every other Adam Sandler movie. Uh, Ray occurring on Boy Meets World, and of course Home Improvement, which I did a couple of those. And yes. but but what I think people, you know, really the iconic role that put Blake Clark over the top, and Craig's got a clip of this, was definitely Shakes the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's okay. It, it, that's how we, I met Adam. That turned out to be very propitious, pro, good for me. <laughs> we're, we're gonna take a quick look at you in, in the movie Shakes the Clown. You got that, oh, Craig? God. I sure Yay. do. <laughs> what? Oh, you haven't heard? Who the, no, I haven't heard nothing. What are you talking about? Binky's the new host. Binky's the new host? Binky? What the fuck? That guy can't even throw I don't care. That guy can't even throw a fucking pie straight. He's not funny. Did he ever make you laugh? I'm t- no, no, he's not funny. I read for that part. That part was mine. You guys know that. You know, I don't even mind that he's not funny. What really bugs me is this, uh, as a human being, he's nothing but a lump of shit. Howdy doody, Shakes. Oh, uh, hi, Binky. I was just talking about you. Yeah, how's your cirrhosis, Shakes? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> how's your disease-ridden cock? <laughs> <laughs> My cock! How dare you! Hey, 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 hey. Fucking <laughs> douchebag! I'm flat and every single one of your heads one by one like pancakes! <laughs> Oh, yeah? Well, the only show you could ever get on would be a show called the Not Funny Diarrhea Club. (laughs) 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 What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) What are you, eight? Get out of my face, all of you! Oh, really scary. Mm -hmm. So, So that's where you first met Adam Sandler? Yes. And you, so you didn't know him before the movie. You got cast, and and so well, well Adam Sandler was 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 really unknown then. Uh, yeah, he he was uh, he just finished NYU. I, I think he'd had a a, show, no. a part on the Cosby Show, and uh, uh, we just hit it off, and we became you know I'm a lot older than him, but we we became friends, and and uh, uh, we kind of uh, took him in. In fact. <clears throat> He was doing, we were doing Shakes the Clown when he found out he got Saturday Night Live. So, oh, wow. Yeah. How cool well, is that? And, then, and Robin Williams was in that movie too. Yes, he was. Well, and you Tom found Kenny. Yeah. He was uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, man. And, uh, and of course, uh, Goldswade. Who? Bob Goldswade. Bob Goldswade. Yeah, he wrote and <laughs> directed and, and, yeah, was in it. It's a Citizen Kane of alcoholic clown movies. <laughs> <laughs> Gold schlagen. That was, was <laughs> why did everybody get so loud all of a sudden? Yeah, I weird. don't know. 
So, so, so that was so that Eight. that was close to the beginning of your film career, right? Yeah, pretty much. I had, and, my first movie was Saint Elmo's Fire. Oh wow! wow. And that was in '84 because Sharon was pregnant with with Nicholas. In fact, uh, I, we were doing it, and she got locked out of the apartment and had to go to Jerry's Deli and and wait for me to get wrapped so I could let her in. <laughs> <laughs> it always goes over big with a pregnant wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least she was at Jerry's Deli. She could she could eat all she wanted and uh, pickles. You know. pickles. And did you have a did you have a manager or somebody that got you that audition or how did that? I had a, a, an agent. Yeah. Were you? Were you funny, when, when I did my first Tonight Show in July of '82, I didn't have a manager. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have anything. I, I, Jim McCauley, all these people are dead. Jim yeah. McCauley, who was the, the the talent coordinator, the comedy talent coordinator for the Diet Show, he saw me you know, it, when he was showcasing or looking at some other people, and he talked to me about it, and, and eventually I did the show. So I think I did the show on a win- the first time on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, I was back. I've been in your party. So... <laughs> <laughs> and and so here's here's a, another another thing that a lot of people um, maybe they do maybe they don't but um, you're the voice of Slinky Dog. That's right. Cause, and you yeah. you inherited that from a good friend, right? What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you cooking beans? What time is it? You know, Varney Varney was a stand up. He was a very funny guy, and uh, I mean hilarious. And yeah, he used to do. You, if you remember back in when when Letterman was on, he'd once in a while say to uh, to Paul Schaefer, "Are you cooking beans? They're doing barn." <laughs> oh yeah. wow! Yeah. Are yeah. you cooking beans? What time? We got any? We got any fudge? Why don't, <laughs> then, why don't you make some Jello? What time is it? And then is he did all those earnest home? movies. What time is it? <laughs> that was part of the stand up. And so, uh, so what what was that like? I mean, I I know it was, uh, and you were friends with Jim. Yes, yeah. I would I would rather not be slinky and have him still on the planet, but uh, uh-huh. he he, uh, yeah. In fact, Jackson Purdue actually started me doing Varney because Purdue would, you know, I'd see him at the comedy store and he he'd say something like, "What time is it?" <laughs> so we both would do like dueling Varneys and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so we, you know, we <laughs> we'd watch him, so we could come up with different instead of just what time is it? It's our own. You know, we'd come up with different. Like, Let some strange things happen since you boys <laughs> around here. I can't judge my distance. <laughs> the oil keep changing colors. I carried on a conversation with the ethyl pump. <laughs> oh, man, Hamilton's truck. I run it up through the roof on the hydraulic. I can't judge my distance. <laughs> I want to. I want to hear Slinky Dog tell uh, tell Woody to go fuck himself. Damn <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, Woody! <laughs> you were in Ladybugs with Rodney, right? Huh? You were in Ladybugs with Rodney? Yes, I was. Yeah, it was supposed to be Kennison, but he. I, here's the key. <laughs> <laughs> your career I is your friends. Maybe those go. <laughs> maybe those go. Part. Maybe those <laughs> ghosts are managing you. Yeah. <laughs> How was it hanging out with Roger? The part, the part that out? I did in Ladybugs was supposed to be Kennison. But wow. he died, so I got the part. See, I didn't know that. Wow. That's weird. That's so weird. The dog was Barney. He died, wow. so I got the part. So. <laughs> How well, was we're going we're gonna to off, off Arantino, and you can play him. <laughs> how, was, how, uh, how was it hanging out with Rodney? He's so funny off stage, right? Yeah, well, he he was not happy in in uh, in, in Denver. He was going, "Can you breathe? I tell you, I can't breathe. There's no way out here." And I said, "Maybe if you quit smoking." Fuck that! He quit smoking. He was pretty unfiltered guy. Yeah, he loved to tell stories though about. Back in the days when he was Jack Roy, oh. <laughs> I guess the 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 altitude really did bother him because he didn't talk a lot off, off camera. It's funny. I was a regular at his club in New York, and the only time I ever met him was in L.A. at the at the Laugh Factory, 
and he's drunk sitting around with a bunch of girl women, whatever. And so, of course, you know, I want to meet my idol. And I walk up to him and I say, you know, Mr. Dangerfield, I'm a huge fan. I'm a play in your club in New York. And he's drunk and he just looks at me and goes, get out of here. You know, just like, <laughs> I just wanted to kill him. I, that's all right. I waited. I waited once for four hours for an audition. He was looking for an opening act. And I drew the last one to go on. And they kept going. He shows up two and a half hours late in his bathrobe out of the limo. Yeah. Right. 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 Oh, with right. with uh, his hand towel, because certain parts of his body would hang lower than his robe. <laughs> and uh, oh, God. <laughs> and oh. it, no, this is the truth. And anyone who's seen him backstage. And anyway, so he's standing there and uh, Messina's going, you'll be perfect for this. You'll be perfect for this. So I wait and I walk out and I go, who do you think I was the most famous magician that ever lived? He goes, a magic act? No way! It just walks <laughs> out. Like, no way! Like, like, loud, right in the front. A magic so, act? No way! You know, so you're saying like, Rodney? You yeah, it was, oh. he has good taste. When I went, <laughs> when I went to audition for the part, uh, I had to go to the to the, to the uh, Hollywood Hilton. Is right. that over in Century City? Right. Like the Hollywood the Hilton. Anyway. So he was staying there, and Harry Basil was writing it. Right. Uh, Harry had to, you know, hang out with him. So I go to Harry, and he says, you know, come up to the whatever room it was, big suite and everything. So I ring the doorbell, and Harry opens the door, and Rodney's in the back, totally naked. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing on. Not a robe. Not in. And, and I went, Harry? Whatever they're paying you, it ain't enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't write comedy oh. with Rodney Dangerfield standing naked in front of you, you just can't. John yeah. said, <laughs> but then he's like you said, he put the bathrobe on and he sat on the couch and crossed his legs. Now, jeez, oh, yeah. oh. he, he usually he usually carried a hand towel. That he was strategic. No, no, I was backstage no, once no, with him. No, he was covering I, it. I, I, I was backstage once with him. I was backstage once with him and my ex-wife. We're sitting on the couch, and he walks up in his bathrobe and puts his foot up on the armrest of the chair and then takes the towel and covers himself. And the night he died, my ex-wife calls me and goes, many people have laughed at his jokes, but not everyone has had to see his nutsack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration for the click clack. <laughs> Oh well, uh, I was in combat and I saw Rodney's nuts. That's uh, <laughs> and you're more traumatized. Life, well, that what was, what was more traumatizing? Yeah. <laughs> All they wanted to do was kill me and now. Yeah, look at them in the crowd. Take a look at them. Uh, <laughs> so then, so, so, torture. So we went, what was so I'm thinking because like I remember you were you were you were a big you had a big part on uh, Boy Meets World, yeah. You were the uh, you were the dad of the uh, the neighbor the guys, right? Ryder Strawn's dad, yeah. Yeah. So so there was that was that one, like your one of your first steady kind of paycheck gigs? I've never had a steady paycheck. No, me neither. I, I've I, never I've never had the luxury of a of a of a schedule. Mm-hmm. You know. They call me up. Usually, they let me know a week in advance. You know, I w- I've said if they were going to make a movie or a TV series about my life, I'd be lucky to get a recurring role. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what most people don't know. They don't know how hard it is to make a living in show yeah. business. They they see you and they think you must be a, a, a trillionaire. Because, you know, but they don't know. Yeah. We live job to job and we never know if we're ever going to work never again. Know. And most of the time, I think it may I, be I do. The end of, we may never work again. That's it. I always I do a job and I go, that's it. I'm never going to work again. And lately, yeah. I've been right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's the thing I love. Somebody sends you a book, a paperback book, a used paperback book. <laughs> and they go, here, write this uh, screenplay and we'll split it. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not a writer. I'm a comedian. Yeah, I'm yeah. an actor. I don't. I don't. Uh, well, you're I a would, writer, but you're not going to write. Yeah, right. But of they course. they expect that. It's like you said. They think we're all billionaires. Yeah, we all know every. You know, we can pick up the phone and call Brad Pitt, George Clooney, 
Pattinson, Batman, Robin, you know, whatever. Well, <laughs> well you know, my Doesn't... daughter my daughter is a playwright and a movie writer, and she's pretty successful. And they did an article recently on her, and they go, her first, there goes, her first Broadway play is a success. And she goes, yeah, they don't count the other 17 I wrote. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. But you, but you've definitely you've been you've been blessed. I mean, yeah. uh, and and so if I can't say I haven't because I remember the and these I'm not even Joe. The best times of my life were hanging out in home improvement set with you and Jimmy oh, yeah. and Tim oh, and, we had a and Richard. It was fun. It was it was probably the most fun I've ever had. And you, yeah, it, it I mean, just how how can it be any better? You you go to work, you laugh all week. You go to work with friends, you laugh all week. You get paid. There you go. There you go. And I mean, then at we the end, would have paid them to let us do it. That's, that's it. like what we're doing now, except we don't get paid. <laughs> Wait, what? You guys lied to and, me. And, and, like and then at the end of the week, we all get drunk with. Uh, I, I can say I got I got drunk with Earl Hindman. How many people can say that? Uh, <laughs> he passed know. on, but you know, but uh, yeah. but those were oh. the days. I mean, was that? I, I remember. Now I don't know. For you, is different because you're in different place in your career. You've had. Uh, but for me, I just remember sitting on that set and and just being that Hollywood feeling like that overwhelming, like, wow, this is just incredible. Yeah, I I get that. I still feel that way. I, I, the other day I was walking down the street at Warner Brothers and I went, walked by the street. It was kind of chilly. So I wanted to go get in the sun and get warm because the inside the, the sound stage is very cold. So I went and stood on the New York street at Warner Brothers, and I'm that I'm standing. That stuff has been. I'm here. I'm supposed. Nobody's going to come tell me to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I know, you know exactly I, I what you're saying. I still get those feelings walking down yeah. the street at MGM or walking down the street at, at, at Warner Brothers. Is yeah, I'm on this lot. I'm on Warner, Brothers, and yeah. nobody's going to. You know, they got to come up to get beat. It. Yeah. I'm supposed <laughs> to be here. And I'm glad you said that because I still get that same feeling. It's just overwhelming. It's like being walking around and knowing that, you know, normally security be looking to escort me off. But yeah. I'm actually working. I belong here. You know, I have yeah. a, a thing. And, and you think uh, of all the things that have gone on before, you know, like uh, Casablanca, freaking <laughs> Casablanca. Uh, of course, every sound stage claims to be Rick's, but I think it's, it's stage nine, right as you come in off of uh, Hollywood uh, Way. Yeah. This, right up by the, it's the first one by the fire station. The, the right. yeah, the, yeah, that was Rick's. Yeah, and, and I remember Jamie me, Fox there. The I Jamie used to Fox say, was every I, oh. I think every time I was working on Warner Brothers, I'd, I'd be walking down and I'd see you. I just remember I was, I, well, of course, we did Boys Meets World, but I was doing a, another show, and and I, I just yeah. I've ran into you so many times there while I was working. I thought, well, you must live on. He he lives on Warner Brothers. That's <laughs> another cool thing is you is you you're on this on the you go to the commissary or something and you see some friends. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, it was yeah yeah. yeah. And Very then Disney. Well, Home that. Improvement Home Improvement was filmed at the Disney. And you know, even though it was an iconic lot, it just didn't have that same feeling. And maybe because it's not as big. But but right. uh, but it still was something else to walk on the set of, you know, which was at the time was the number one show. Tim had the number one show, the number, number one, one book, movie. and the number one movie in the world. And the number one and the number one bestseller on the New York book ex- book uh, bestseller list. Yeah, yeah, he was golden. He right. was, and and it was like you know, and so you and you, of course see you can see Harry's. This isn't from the show. This is somebody who probably named their hardware show uh, their store after. What was on yeah. the show? Harry's Hardware. Probably going to get sued by Disney, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to cease and desist first. <laughs> yeah, but uh, those those were the days. I mean, hanging out with uh, with with. Now, did what, did you hang out? I mean, I know we hung out with uh, with the, me, you, and and Jimmy. Did you hang out with any of the other guys? Uh, not really. No. No. Uh, they were on all, home improvement. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, right. you know, Tim was always busy. Yeah, right. and, that's the dream. Uh, yeah, he always had something going on, and you know, I, yeah, I, I wanted we we'll go that time we went shooting. That was cool. That was, if you guys don't know Blake, Blake uh, well, I don't, I don't want to mention because I'm guessing. Well, everything you have is legal, right? I don't think we should talk about it. 
But what I will say is this man is, when it comes to driving now, I remember, I don't know if it was my Jeep or it was your vehicle. We went off-roading. And now when you think of off-roading, you just think of a dirt road. But Blake is insane. I remember those rocks. You, I mean, you know, oh, you ever see it on God. the TikTok videos when those guys, that's what Blake yeah. you used to do and scared the living hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a Defender 90. And, uh, you know, I actually took it off-road. A lot of people who have ro- mm-hmm. Land Rovers or or all that. The closest they come into being off road is a drive through at Starbucks. We used to go back. <laughs> Remember that one place where, where both sides of the road just went dropped off about a couple of hundred feet, yeah. and you guys were like, "Holy shit! Holy shit!" Look, I've been down this road a bunch of times. No, but no. Me, don't distract me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and 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 he's not. Mom, let me tell you something. My pants were brown after I. That was. Uh, you may have done it before, but I had never done, and I will would never do it again. That's really scared the living hell well, out of it me. It probably wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done, but <laughs> no, no. you guys, you guys were talking about walking around the sets and everything, and you know how you feel like you belong there. When Hal Spear was writing for the Arsenio Hall show, me and Dave Hawthorne went there, and we we're walking around the Universal lot. And I go, we can't go there. And Horthorn goes, watch this. He picks up a clipboard. <laughs> he goes, if you have a oh. clipboard, if you have a clipboard in your hand, you can go anywhere. <laughs> and I go, what? And he wanders onto this movie set and they go, excuse me. And before they can even ask him a question, he goes like this. He goes, so you'll notice the proscenium up there. I took that from a 1942 <laughs> old hotel in Detroit. And then I blended it with the guy who goes, oh, excuse me, and just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. So, Look so, like you belong. That's all yeah, I ask. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, so now the United States of Al. So we, we mentioned it before. So And, and of course, the king of, the king of TV, Chuck, Chuck Laurie's show. And uh, yeah. so, can you, uh, uh, you know, uh, would you would you show him a script of mine? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, I just happened to find you. I was flipping channels, and I see you there, and I was like, "Oh my god, look at that!" And and you look you look great. I mean, I'm, last time last time I saw you, you had just had uh, the knee replacement, right? Yeah. And I, I just remember we ran up to you and give you a, you gave me a big hug, and I was like, "Wow." And you said, I look old, I know. I was like, no, you look great, man. You look fantastic. Well, I feel old. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're par- parts of me ain't as old as my wife, Sharon. I've had three knee replacements. Three. Wow. Wow. Because one of them got infected and I had to do it oh. again. Oh, don't tell and me I've this. I got to go for a hip. Place. <laughs> I've had my gallbladder removed. I've, uh, I've had my neck operated on, my hands, my shoulder. Oh. Sharon said, "One more thing. If you have one more thing replaced, I'm gonna have to remarry you. There ain't enough original parts left." <laughs> <laughs> How was the hip replacement? I have to have one. <laughs> who who did it? I have to have a hip replacement in a month. How was that? I, it, it's a lot easier than the than the knee replacement. Knees, right. Like yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I need a double now, knee. They've got it so. You know, they didn't even have to put the. Whatever it is that you would call it, the separator right. between, and I, I mean, I would. They did it one day, and I was out of. I left the next. Yeah, wow. they told me I'd be in less pain after it than I am in now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I suggest do it. Yeah, because you know, after I finally had the knee replacement, I said, "Why didn't I put it off for so long?" Right. Yeah, but so are they cool. okay now? Your knees or your three knees? Oh uh, yeah, they're still <laughs> my knees. <laughs> <laughs> They're they're new, but they're in my body. <laughs> <laughs> the only guy who ever rejected a knee. Yeah, they, they're, it's only so much they can do. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I'm holding oh, off right. on that. I need a double knee replacement, but I've been holding off on it for years because uh, I am not excited. You know, I've just heard so many bad things about it. It'll be the same, you know. I, I guess it depends on the doctor. So, yeah. The doctor oh, you you did, mean you had a doctor? doctor my- <laughs> <laughs> you had a doctor? <laughs> I got a guy named Vinny who's going to do it behind the right aid and behind the dumpster over there. He's going to give me oh, a couple new guy, knees. Sure, yeah. He did my first one. <laughs> oh, man. So, so, uh, so you're working. So, anyway, I just, I just, I know we're, we're getting up on time. And, uh, I just, I, I just want to say what, what a pleasure it is. Definitely been hanging out with you, buddy. And, uh, when when this uh, when this pandemic finally ends, I'm definitely going to let you take me out for dinner. 
Exactly. <laughs> you think it's ever going to end? I don't know. I, well, I think it's going to get to the point where, where, yeah, where it's kind of endemic, and it, yeah, yeah, I hope so. Well, and there's a lot of COVID protocols on the sets, right? There are oh a lot God, of- yeah, the, every day, every yeah. single day you go there. First of all, you have to have one, every week. You have to do a, a one uh, nose reaming for to get on the lot. <laughs> so then you have a, have a pass that you have to renew every day. Then once you get on the lot, you have to go to the sound stage, and then you get ream there. And then you have to go <laughs> wait in your dressing room until they tell you you can. Uh, you're clear. Then you have to wear a mask all the time. And, you know, you have, they have different clearances for like certain people aren't allowed on the set. It's totally different than, than what it was oh. like on home improvement. Oh yeah. That was totally, and I mean, I remember you, well, a couple of weeks ago, I went for an audition. What I don't understand is the prostate check. What about that for? But home they improvement. Make, I need a they, new agent. Do they make you wear the, do they? Um, yeah. Put the yeah, where I get for your enthusiasm. And, uh, they take off them for the actors, and then they give you the the yeah. neck shield. Right. As soon as you're finished, they someone brings it to you and puts the the clear one right, yeah. so it doesn't yeah. mess up your makeup. Face mask, yeah. Well, you, yeah, yeah, the face mask. You'll, the, you'll the, remember the you, you mentioned the, the security and everything being different. I know you'll remember this. I remember when I moved out and would go. You didn't even there was no basic security. You'd walk on Warner Brothers lot. I don't even think sure. you had to check in with security. You could walk onto any sound stage and just you know walk around. And, right. and the general public probably wasn't aware of that. Unless otherwise, the red they would have. Was flashing, then they'd jump on you. But yeah, yeah. didn't you need that light? Unless you have a clipboard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try that. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, well, I just want to say, Blake, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for hanging out Thank with you. us. And, and I know me. we've kept you longer than, than I told you, but, uh, you know, I, I, you, you're Not like, I have anything to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much, man. You're great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Great to really see you, Blake. It. Good to see and you. Dan. Pleasure meeting you. Oh, All right. Thanks, yeah. guys. Fun. So, hey, yeah. let's have a round of applause for our <laughs> Yes, and good job, Mike, and good job, yeah, Joe, job, and, and Craig, and good to have Jan here. And that's that right, so we are the really? Big Bad Broadcast. You can find us on our Facebook page, Craig. or go to our or, or go to our website, <laughs> which is www.thebbbradio.com, and you can see us there, and you can see our past shows, or you can listen to us as a podcast, yes. and hey... We'll be back next week with probably another great show. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Let's say goodbye. That was fun. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.